afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to the FC Global Seminar. Uh, my name is Genki Uno. Uh, I'm a visiting researcher from Kaginaka Corporation, which is Japanese uh, or international design and construction company. And uh, uh, I came here to investigate uh, about the future city plan or uh, small city planning uh, in order to inherit my knowledge accumulated here to my colleagues in Japan construction company. And uh, uh, my contract with the SEC is already over, uh, and I'm supposed to go back to Japan permanently this Friday. So, literally, this is my final day of this, and I'm very happy to share my research outcomes with you. And the, today's title is Understanding Future City Vision Mapping Smart Cultural Mobility and Smart Circularity Initiatives in Southeast Asia and Europe. So, let's get started. So let me introduce my Takenaka Corporation overview. Takenaka has dealt with the soul architecture for over 400 years, but uh, it dealt with only soul architecture. And it doesn't uh, accumulate like a uh, city planning and all those things. But so, um, and now Takenaka Corporation is eager to city plan the data uh, in Japan. So, in that sense, I came here uh, for like uh, uh, experience, like a uh, city designing for cutting edge future. Uh, city planning methodology. And to, be, to better understand what we can do for in urban planning, I came to Singapore. And my purpose are uh, to accumulate continuous knowledge regarding future city and digitally focus on smart city and uh, uh, making connections with many researchers here. But well, what is smart city? Uh, smart city can be defined as a city integrating with uh, smart technology or this technology to solve various problem problems. This definition is still too cold to test it for. So I picked up four our categories in the future city that is mobility, culture, mm -hmm. circular economy, and governance. And I submitted and I wrote and uh, submitted two academic, academic papers regarding mobility, mobility and culture, and circular economy and governance. And uh, those two academic papers are very common methodology. That is the first way, creating the technology framework and evaluating multiple cities based on the framework. And finally, comparing those cities. And lastly, uh, I'd like to share the uh, material uh, about the mobility and the culture. The paper title I submitted to the conference is Evaluating the Context Adaptiveness in Mobility Visions for Future Smart Cities. So, when I started the surveillance for the city planning in the future, especially in Southeast Asia, uh, I found I collected a lot of future vision, future city vision images like this, and I juxtaposed the, those images here. Uh, and, uh, I found it is a bit difficult to tell which is which. Like, there's a large degree of uniformity, and uh, where does any urban transition process should be context adaptive? And this image is proposed by Singapore Tanzan University, and that is, the, um, that is proposed by Singaporean government and Chinese government in the China. Uh, and it is said that this city has failed to attract citizens to live here because of the lack of context adaptiveness. So in order to attract people, the context adaptiveness in the city is very important. And so far, we tend to pick up the smart city solutions from existing smart cities, especially in European countries, and adapt it to the uh, not so developed cities, especially in Southeast Asia. Uh, however, uh, we strongly believe that we should add context adaptiveness to the smart city solutions in order to avoid public dependency uh, in smart cities in so-called developed countries. So in this discussion, we focus on build this system, which plays a crucial role in urban planning. Our aim is to develop evaluation tools for, for mobility systems for the smart cities in a context adaptive way. So uh, by doing this, this research, uh, at first we have still huge gap between high-income countries and low-end middle-income countries. Uh, 
only focusing on the smartness of those cities. However, when we take context adaptiveness into consideration, the gap will be smaller. So this is our purpose. And firstly, we will pick up existing smart cities and smart city vision across the world. So we selected 12 cities, uh, eight cities, sorry, uh, plus four for eight Singapore, Zurich, Oslo, and Taipei. Uh, they are the top ranked four cities in Smart City Index 2021. And another four is Petro Makila, Makassar, Iskandar, and Bangkok. Uh, those are an example of the low and middle income countries having a smart city project whose budgets are estimated over two billion US dollars. Uh, and lower, but those are all located in Southeast Asian countries. And we also added the uh, Tenga, New Park City, Somber Smart City, Medin Smart City, and Bansu Smart City as a neighborhood in the city. And when we uh, consider about the neighborhood, uh, if the neighborhood uh, developed in the future, uh, that uh, technology will be beneficial for the city itself. So we, we took neighborhood consideration also. And nextly, by uh, using existing tool, we will evaluate the smartness and mobility systems in the cities. So this is this table is from the existing literature. Uh, those are uh, multiple indicators like smart city, smart street lighting, or smart street service, or restricted traffic zone, and so on. And uh, uh, those items are uh, like our yes and questions. We can use these items that are, are evaluated for the evaluating cities. And if we ask for uh, that city have a smart city, smart street light or does that city have a smart street service, or we can call, we can say yes and no. And we can collect the uh, number of yes and we can evaluate how the city uh, is developed regarding the smart mobility system. And this is the diversion result. So first column represent the uh, uh, smartness, mobility smartness, and the first row represent the uh, country and neighborhood and city. And red cell represent the presence of the indicator in the city, and gray cells represent the absence of that indicator. And notably blue cell uh, signified blood indicator. Uh, and uh, clearly in the uh, high income countries like Singapore, Switzerland, Norway, and Taiwan, uh, have many red cells, which means uh, they are well development. They are well developed regarding the smartness of the key systems. And next, extending the tool, uh, we also evaluated the context adaptiveness of the mobility systems. So we consulted the UNESCO CCC framework, which is a city culture and creativity framework. That is proposed by UNESCO in 2021, uh, and which can enable it, uh, enable cultural heritage to be social, spatial, and economic benefits. And according to the UNESCO, um, they plus that below uniqueness, digital environment, urban infrastructure, skills and innovation, financial support, and regulations. And when it comes to uniqueness, it is a bit difficult or challenging to define what is uniqueness. So we consulted the um, lonely planet or oh, getting around getting around the part of the lonely planet. And uh, we found multiple transportation systems in the getting around the part. And I just suppose that those are transportation systems from left to right in the same order of generality. So for example, bus or bicycle or car, car and motorcycle or um, available all of the, in all of the cities, so they are very common. However, when we focus on others, like Horatio in Singapore, Mountain Transit in Zurich, and so on, or uh, not overlap with many other cities, so we can define those transportation systems by unique. And those are uh, those unique mobility systems, like Triso in Singapore, Triso in Philippines, and so on. And we revised the CCC framework to evaluate context adaptiveness of mobility systems in the, in the city. And we also evaluated all over the city like this, and we calculated the score. So uh, according to the formula, uh, twice for utilities to the people in Thailand in mountain transport in Switzerland get the highest score of the city in Asia and twice for 
friction in the cities, uh, spot cell things, they are not integrated with this technology. And the trishaw in Singapore get the uh, only two because uh trishaw in Singapore is used for a lot of people for tourism, but uh, it's used for only uh, to tourists, and that is not used for local people on a daily basis, right? And finally, we compare the scores for the city's guard and analyze the importance of context adaptiveness. So, so firstly, uh, when we consider only current mobility smartness, uh, there is a huge gap between high income countries and low and middle income countries. But when we take context adaptiveness and future neighborhoods contribution and future technology into consideration, uh, the gap between them uh, is closer. Uh, in that sense, um, we should add context adaptiveness to the smart city solutions and we can propose the uniqueness of the city, which is inherent, inherent to the city in order to avoid the public dependency in European countries. So, you need to develop in way how it's important for the future city development. So, this is the first literature I wrote. And uh, secondly, uh, that is regarding cyber governance. The title I of the submitted paper uh, is, is the smart circular city emerging, mapping policies and initiatives in 12 cities. As I told you before, uh, smart city is worldwide concept, which is acceptable for worldwide because the digital technology uh, is applied in all of the countries. And likewise, the circular built environment concept is being adopted by every city, regardless of its income level or regions, and so on. And the circular built environment can be defined in the circular economy and the construction industry, right? And uh, for example, in Peru, cells tendency to innovate or poor performance of existing buildings are key driver to facilitate circular built environment, environment more. And when it comes to innovation, Construction waste generation associated with growing population is a key driver to promote circular environment more. So, like this, uh, background is completely different, but again, the circular built environment is the same. So, it's acceptable concept worldwide. However, um, smart city is acceptable and circular built environment is also acceptable worldwide. However, the smart circular city in which the circular built environment initiatives are enhanced by smart technology is hardly investigated at the natural implementation level. So this is our, our research policy. And actually, when it comes to the uh, existing literature review, so there are many bibliographies, uh, uh, bibliographies to uh, discuss how Smart technology can be impactful for the um, circular environment. So, for example, BIM or GIS or RFID uh, can be a key driver to facilitate the circular environment more, but that is in a right? So, to what extent smart technologies are actually implemented as government initiatives has not yet been investigated in depth. In order to better understand the relationship between both driving smart city and circular environment, uh, we need a new relation framework. So the first question is, is the smart circular city emerging? And we adopted the same methodology, creating a relation framework and evaluating the multiple cities based on the framework and uh, comparing the two cities. So um, yeah, conducting this methodology, uh, I finally uh, answer to these questions very quickly. I can answer mm -hmm. the first question. Uh, is the smart cycles be emerging? I can say yes, but in the future, Paris, Brussels, and London are going to adapt the world cycle of the environment in shopping supported by the digital technology or smart technology. Uh, in that sense, Paris, Brussels, and London, those three cities can be said as smart cycle cities. But in the process of coming to this answer, a number of interesting patterns emerge. So let's look at that together. Firstly, uh, we selected 12 cities representing a wide range from different level uh, and smart city rankings across the world. So the first one is uh, 
uh, like the mobility discussion, those four are Singapore, Zurich, Kosovo, Taipei, and another four are uh, London, Paris, Brussels, and Berlin. Uh, they are said well built circular economy cities or countries in the world uh, by the people that's news media in the United States. And uh, those eight cities are all high income countries. So we added Iskandal, Makassar, Manila, and Bangkok uh, in as a upper and lower low income SE countries. And also the harvest quantity was in here last Friday. Secondly, I sought for and catalyze circular mm -hmm. environment initiatives from government documents of the relevant cities. So this is the whole categorization process. Uh, and this is the sequence of the decisions. And all of those uh, decisions are based on this question, like a mobility paper. And I will explain a bit more in a very simple way. So first of all, uh, I queried CDA, plus all of us related to the cycle of the environment, like use of human resources for long life system design and so on. And I got a lot of government issues from Google, but I excluded like a, a newspaper or a magazine or individual blog. Uh, so we focused or we stick to, to the, our own governmental documentation. And now uh, we have a lot of government documents here, um, and we selected initiatives for the cycle environment from this uh, multiple documents, uh, and we finally got the single the environment initiatives. But that is before the classification, right? And let's focus or let's consider uh, one of the examples. So, for example, collecting information about the products and their operation beam, etc., in the building to facilitate their reuse. So, so firstly, this initiative is either an urban level or building level initiative. And this initiative clearly uh, articulate in the building, so we can classify this indicator as a building level design and construction initiatives. And we then divided that initiative by circular built environmental strategy, which is narrow, slow, close, and generated. And I will explain a bit more. So, in the circular built environmental strategies, there are four narrow, slow, close, and generate. And narrow means to input less resources, and slow means to uh, use resources repeatedly and to extend their valuable service life. And close means to return the resources to the economic cycle, and regenerate means to upgrade those conditions of our system so that our uh, its impact on the environment is that positive. So this is post strategy, and uh, this uh, uh, example of measures we use, so we can really understand uh, this initiative uh, is relatively slow. And next, we can define that uh, initiative is regarding the present situation or our uh, emission situation. So it is already implemented or implemented in the future. Uh, and uh, regarding this initiative, it was described as a target for 2050 in Brussels. So it is clearly about the emission situation. Finally, uh, we can define this initiative is smart or not smart. And regarding this initiative, it articulates beam. So that is regarded as smart technology. So, like this, we categorize all of the uh, indicators uh, and we calculate the scores based on how many categories the city covers and compare the scores that the city's got and discuss the actual implementation situation of the cycle of environment initiatives. So, this is one of the results. Weather chart represent A, B, P, and E, C, meaning awareness creation for the bottom up, uh, top down network development, educational tool, and circular economy infrastructure. And I'm just supposing the London Paris are 12 cities and the average of those 12 cities. And the blue line represents the present situation, and the red line uh, represents the ambition situation. And in general, Circular economy infrastructure uh, and shutters are the most common, while shutters are near less frequently. So, the, regarding urban level, 
circular economy infrastructure, you know, uh, circular built environment initiatives are maybe like a top down or circular economy infrastructure is uh, implemented fastly and bottom up, bottom up like a system participation, or this is less frequent. And secondly, this is the whole building level initiatives. So, like the urban level, uh, the radar chart represents BSGM, which means a uh, building and structures, systems, components, and materials. So, notably, Singapore and also in Taipei, they only appears uh, in the line, which is present. So, uh, documents in those cities do not mention which initiatives. So, the red line is completely overlapped with the blue line. So, they don't mention about the emission situation. And the gap between present and the emission situation, which means the gap between red line and the blue line uh, is bigger than the urban development in Shabbis. And next, this is the comparative result for the circular built environment strategies. So on the left hand, this is the urban level in Shabbis for present situation and emission situation. And on the right hand, this is the building level in Shabbis. Present and the emission situation. And clearly, now slow and close there are almost 30% for each. However, when it comes to the building level in shortage of the present situation, we generate uh, is higher, higher proportion. Like it's very specific. And that is because of Singapore. So according to the National Park Board in Singapore, uh, Singapore introduces why, how, and where the installed greenery is building this. And according to uh, this governmental agency, there are three benefits. Like greenery spaces can mitigate high radiation and result in moderate temperature in lower and outdoor. So like this, uh, this methodology can upgrade the conditions of our system. So in that sense, uh, this initiative uh, can be regarded as regenerative. Here is a comparing, comparing result of the circular environment initiatives coverage for present and present plus emission situations. So, as I said before, Singapore did not improve that score uh, in the future. However, it is still top ranked city. Right? And when we focus on this counter Malaysia, uh, what's the difference uh, in the 12 cities? Uh, in the present for emission situation, it improves that ranking from 11 to 5. So in that sense, we can say our uh, scandal is a massive central environment city. And here is the uh, same graph as before, but the, uh, with different color scheme. The blue bar represents building level, and the red bar represents urban level, and the deep color of the blue and the red represent that initiatives are uh, connected to the this policy. And uh, I said Singapore and Zurich, Taipei and also are top ranked for uh, most smart cities in the smart city index 2021. However, uh, Singapore, Zurich and also do not integrate like a digital technology with our, our circular environmental initiatives. But in the ambition situations, Paris and Brussels and London all improved their rankings much more than present, thanks to their uh, digital contribution to the cycle of the environment in Shabbos. In that sense, we can say because this is a classic uh, smart cycle cities. So, and I corrected all of the digital contribution technologies regarding cycle of the environment and we uh, they can be classified uh, to the three categories. First one is digital building information management initiatives, and the second one is material storage platform using ICT. And the third one is digital innovations to reduce consumption in public utilities. And in the first one, uh, BIM is frequently mentioned, so I can say BIM uh, will be the key driver to facilitate cycle and environment or uh, in the future. In summary, uh, we highlighted 
very useful contribution of this framework. So this framework is broad enough to be adapted in any screen. So it's basically uh, based on the yes no question. So uh, we can adapt this framework regardless or any statistics, regardless if it's income level or region sense, and, and we can expand this framework more. So uh, it's very close, but uh, just and we assess the actual implementation level such as the environment uh, initiatives, uh, which is sometimes supported by the technology at the government level. So there is a probably our investigation regarding the actual implementation level. So I think, and based on our result, so we know actually just the purpose of the number of clouds is quite some. So it is our uh, investigation more by the region, for example. Um, to what extent is, is the regenerative strategy impactful in supporting the cycle of the environment compared to the other three strategies like narrow slope and flows? So, which is a relatively new concept, so we can map uh, how it will be the impact of the And why do some cities not mention their engagement situation or future plans like Singapore? So, Singapore did not mention about the future, but the uh, that's why uh, I, I don't know why. And why do some top ranked cities in Smart City in 1651 get such low scores? Like, also, also is uh, like a top ranked Smart City uh, ranking in the uh, 2020. However, uh, it, it doesn't mention about anything regarding Smart City um, cycle of the environment in the future city or current city. So, uh, there are a lot of our questions and this framework can this discussion for us. It is also really useful for the future work. And here is the summary of what I have done for these two years. So I research the future cities from the four aspects mobility, culture, circular economy in the in the uh, construction industry and governance. And those research are based on Creating a framework, evaluating cities using the framework, and comparing those cities. And uh, I got a lot of insights from this research, so I will interpret those experiences to my colleagues in cooperation and uh, explore what we can do in the urban creation of Japan or worldwide. And also, looking forward to collaboration in the future with you again. That's that. Uh, and one one thing here is how the scores and the scoring systems were constructed. So, and if you could go to slide on uh, local mobility systems, I was wondering what a zero for GPs versus four for tricycles means. Like, what does the comparison tell us? Uh, yes. So, um, we are researching a smart city mobility system in the smart city. So the uh, essential part is. Um, Integrate integration with smart technology. Okay, when it comes to now with data or bicycle data from these countries, that is not ready to um, digital technology. So when we consider about the smart city, uh, those mobility systems can be uh, considered as the smart city solutions. So we emphasize the uniqueness of the smart city. So something that some policy is essential. To, to add a bit more uh, context, I'm Peter Hendricks. I'm uh, was a uh, game advisor uh, on this work. Um, that also means that there's a potential to get four points if you add smart technology to those you new grant for. So, mm -hmm. so in that sense. That is the that's how the, the scoring works. So because it were it's an evaluation framework for uh, smart cultural solutions, if they're not smart or they're not cultural, they get zero. In that sense, cultural being the, the, I, I'm referring to uniqueness there, right? So that means currently a score can be zero, but it could become higher by either becoming, well, be, by becoming smart and unique. Yeah. So is there a composite score or three? 
Uh, it's basically it's a product, and if it's not completely okay. integrated, that digital component gets zero. I think the equation is there somewhere, right? That that component gets a zero, and so the whole score becomes zero. But of course, change them to something that has a value of one because it's all yes or no questions. Your total score would become well four in this case. That's Yes, for example, in the ICD uh, they and also didn't have any uh, cultural mobility systems. So, in that sense, like our uh, Indonesia or Thailand or some of the other uh, Southeast Asian countries, potential get more. But when it comes to Thailand and also, well, they do not have the potential to give the yes or something. So, if we do in Southeast Asia countries, is uh, integration with this technology so that they can be on this was more digital. Thank you for your comment. Um, and I'm also partially involved because um, you, you uh, well, was co author some, some papers, but I think you um, started something very ambitious. Which is the intersection of um, very broad categories, uh, smart city, circularity, and you really have to define what the intersection could look like. Because we all know that digital technologies or smart cities are not an end in themselves, they need to serve a purpose, and one could be contributing to the circular economy. And therefore, um, looking at how this could play out to the level of cities or buildings is still an unresolved uh, or an uncharted territory. We all know that something happens there, but we don't really know. So I find um, those, those follow-up questions that you showed at the very end very interesting. So for instance, um, we all know the mantra, reduce, reuse, recycle, or you know, what is the regenerative component really doing in cities which in the context of emerging economies are, uh, if, if, if there's a context where you recreate everything, the regenerate is something that will follow in 50 years from now, which is a different story in, let's say, you know, European countries, but maybe even Singapore, where a lot of the built environment is already constructed. So here the regenerate and, and reuse is much more important. But I think these are really interesting aspects and um, I found it very brave that you tackle the big questions. And um, I think it's, I think you did uh, really, really well. Actually, uh, the most important thing is I got is to be honest, is uh, I came up with a lot of questions of going up questions like that. Uh, and uh, I will go back to the uh, uh, industry side. However, uh, when we implement actual uh, city design or architectural design, uh, I will consider about these questions. So, uh, Thank you, Jackie, for the interesting presentation. So uh, I thought it's quite interesting that you brought spanning and circularity together. And I think like, you are right that it's traditionally been like, quite discussed separate. So like, I'm curious about your experience since you've been working on this for a while. Do you think a city like has to be smart to be able to adopt this kind of circularity technologies? Or do you think like is there a like a dependency between them? Essentially, my question is, and a follow up question is, if you could recommend to the team who designed the smart city index a set of indicators to measure circularity, what would it be? Uh, it's actually, um, smartness is mandatory to design the city, but the smartness can facilitate the uh, to solve the uh, urban problems, like many various fields, like agriculture, so uh, so actually, especially for the uh, low-income countries, uh, the city is still developing, 
and uh, those countries is not smart, but they are uh, great infrastructure, like a uh, bridge or wide road system. So the uh, firstly, those great infrastructure should be implemented, and the uh, after that, uh, this technology can contribute to the uh, make the transportation smooth more and so better. So yeah, this is my opinion. And when we I go back to the technical question, uh, I can I can search the intersection between security or mobility and this technology. Right? So uh, which balance between them and technology for the smart city is a cause of the problem, like smart support and city. So uh, yeah, in that sense, we should make city in the uh, better sense. And also, uh, yeah, the follow up yeah. question yeah. Uh, in the So, in the I guess if you could yeah. design the mm. smart city mm. to be more mm. intense, mm. right? Would you add circularity in since, like, as mm. pointed out earlier, like the smart city is a goal, right? That we all strive to And mm -hmm. if circularity is going to be so important, like, should it be part of that? It's actually uh even the smart city is one it actually include the uh, circularity of the city, but uh, it's it's it doesn't cover a wide range of circularity uh, it's really in the construction industry. So in that sense, uh, I think uh, any any framework for circularity project cannot cover all of the things that are the uh circularity. However, uh, we try to do them. We should try to do them. And uh, because I am from the construction industry side, uh, I highlighted the construction uh, aspect. So, in that sense, uh, from the industry side, I would like to do the construction industry to possibly separate the, the sample. So, in that sense, uh, my framework I created uh, would be beneficial to assess or uh, improve the security more uh, in the future in the construction industry. Thank you. And if in continuation with this research I speak to the 
response specific knowledge. So I emphasize the how specific knowledge can contribute to the uh, mobility system or psychological environment. And something like that. However, um, we should go back to the um, energy consumption of this sort of this sort of knowledge. So in that sense, uh, I don't know. I, I don't find any answer yet. However, uh, we should recognize the problem. Maybe online. There is no questions. My presentation will be perfect. Thank you very much, and let's keep in touch in the future.